Okay, so for Cox explanation A, uh, our whole interval is zero to three, which is why um, this is one, two, and three. Our graph is going to start at f of zero equals one on the f of x here. So let's just put that dot right there for now. Uh, the problem is asking us for a smallest possible uh, f of x value and also the largest possible f of x value for this uh, problem right here. So the smallest one is 0 0.25, which is going to make our graph look like that, which gives us an f of x value of 1.25. Now the derivative of 0 0.25 would be 1, our slope would be 1, and that would give us a graph that looks like this, and that would give us an f of x value of 2 for the interval uh, 0 to 1, which can be seen here. So for this second problem, our smallest possible slope is 0, um, which would give us something like this. It's flat. It's asking us for, by the way, it's asking us for the interval of 1 to 2. It will give us something flat like that. For the largest slope, it's going to be 2, which is going to give us a graph that looks like this, and if we trace it back, it will give us four. And we also want to block off each interval like that, just to just so it makes it more clear uh, what interval, um, what the values are for each interval. So for question C, it's asking for the same. Um, what are the highest, um, f highest and smallest f of x values? given these two slopes and between these two intervals. So between the interval two and three, we have a least, pos a least, um, a least possible slope of negative one. So starting from our initial least f of x value from part A, we will go from 1.25 down one, which would give us an f of x of 0 0.25. And then for our highest um, slope, uh, we will go from our highest f of x value from a, and from this point here, we will go on a horizontal line because the slope is zero. So for the last question C, it's asking the same thing um, of given the, the smallest possible slope and the largest possible slope, which is the derivative of the slope, um, what are the largest f of x values between these two intervals, two and three? So one way we could think about these first two examples is that we have our x-axis being um, the speed while our f of x axis is the distance. So for this example, we can see that starting from f of one, I mean from f of zero, which equals one, we are, say we're going in a car, and the speed is five per minute. And then, um, so when we start from one and we're going up by a slope of 0 0.25, we are only going up 1.25 miles, given we are going at this speed for this time. And so the same thing can be as we're going at a speed speed of one. So we're going up, our distance increases by two and between the intervals of zero to one. So, and then we could say the same thing for these two slopes, zero, the smallest slope is zero and the largest slope is zero. Starting from this speed where we left off, if we go up by the largest possible slope, which is two, we will go up four miles and then our distance would be, that would be how much we're going, um, the distance we're going between these two in, um, units of time. And um, so for C, it can be, so we're starting, we have our least possible slope of negative one, and then our largest slope of zero, because um, negative one cannot be greater than zero and that is between these two intervals of two and three. So the line here shows that starting from the least slope that we gathered from this initial um, intervals, 
It's going down by one, so our, F, our new f of x value would be 0 0.25. So in relation to speed, we're slowing down, so we won't be covering as much um, distance here. So our distance would be 0 0.25. And the same thing here from our largest possible um, value of f of x from this initial um, interval. We will be going at a constant speed of zero because zero isn't increasing or decreasing um, at four. So our our distance here will be um, just four. Uh, for part B, it asks us to draw and shape the smallest region in the x y plane of the graph of f of, that the graph of f of x must lie in. Um, so when we're looking for the smallest region, we want to look at the slopes of all of the intervals. So we know that um, geometrically the slope is the rise over one. So when looking at our graph, we want to see which, which interval has the least rise over one. So for example, if we look at this between the intervals of, zero, of one to two or zero to two basically, this big triangle, this big rise over run is significantly bigger than this rise over one between zero and one. So to shade in the smallest region of the x, y, and plane, it can be this um, slope between zero and one, one from this interval up here from part A. And the question also um, asks to discuss how f of x being differentiable matters. And the definition of differentiability is when the slope of the tangent line equals the limit of the function at a given point. This directly suggests that for a function to be differentiable, it must be continuous and its derivative must be continuous as well. So for example, we started our initial from part A, we started from the given um, f of zero equals one. And we went up from our least possible slope of, to 1.25, and then from our largest possible slope of one, which equaled two. And so then for our second part, from our, with our largest possible slope, we carried on from this large f of x value from part A to go up by two, which gave us our another f of x value of four. So, it is, um, it is important because we started from the previous slope, uh, previous large f of x value of these two intervals, and we carried on from the previous intervals all throughout these three um, situations. So it wouldn't be the same if we started from from f of from one with this large slope because it would one to by two would just be three. So that's why we need differentiability because we need the, we want the derivative to be continuous as well.